I did a quick video using my phone against my TV, which didn't look the greatest, on showing how I did my compound nameplate for my name. So I figured I would do something with screen capture software so you actually can see what I'm doing. Um, it's a very easy process. Anybody can really do this, especially you know with how easy in Inkscape is set up. Um, so here we go. And we're going to pretend we have here a piece of wood that is two inches by two inch stock. Okay, we know this is square. We're good. So we want to design the nameplate for Steve first. In order to do that, we're going to draw a rectangle. Any length, doesn't matter. Click your selection tool, which is the arrow, to make sure this is selected. Come up here to your inches. If this says something else, just click the arrow and go to inches. Or you can go into your do file, document properties, and you can change your settings in here. Um, all right, so once we have this selected, we then want to change this to the height of our stock. So we know our board or, P or whatever piece we're compounding is two inches. So we're going to change this to two and hit enter. Boom. We now have a two inch high rectangle. Again, length doesn't matter because we'll change that pending what we're putting inside of it. So now we have a black box. Well, what about the white interior? Obviously, you know, we want to have our border, but we also want to have a place to put our names. So you draw another rectangle over the top of this one. I'll show you a couple ways to do this. So once you have your rectangle here, obviously you can't see it because it's black, just like the background. So you can come down here to fill, right click, white, and now you can actually see it. And you can eyeball this and kind of make your border the way you want it. Some people like them thin, some people like them a little thicker. And theoretically, now you can stop here, go to your text, and start typing what you want to put inside. And then hold down control to scale. And you can scale that up. Move this over. Scale it up a little more. You can eyeball it, or you can use, I'll show you again, another way to do this and with the centering and all that fun stuff. Um, so now you have hello. There's, there's your first side, your top side. Now what do you do about a second side? You select everything by being up on your selection tool. Drag across to select all. On your keyboard, I like to do it this way because it's easier. Hold, uh, hold down control and hit D for duplicate. Now it looks like nothing happened, but you can drag this down and now there's a duplicate. So now what you can do, since you have a duplicate, come down to your text tool, select hello, and we can now type whatever we want in here. And it will fill the box. So now we have hello Steve. So now we have one side and we have our other side. Now if the stock is 90 degree stock cut perfectly you know square and you want to be able to fold this what I do is I come down here to the bezier tool it looks like a pen with a weird line I will so click hold down control come across click again hit enter it now made a line I'll change that line to a different color. Doesn't matter what, just something that you can see. You can even change the thickness if you want by coming down here. And you can go to pixels, you can go to inches. I personally go to pixels and I'll crank this to at least three. And then you can select this. And with the arrow keys, move it up, and there's your crease line. So now, what you're saying to me is, well, that was all eyeballed. All right, so let's do this another way. 
This is the way I like to do it because it makes things a lot easier. So first step, same process. Draw yourself a rectangle. Grab your selection tool at the top here. Make it two inches tall because again our stock is two inches. I'm going to change my line to black. I'm going to change my fill to black. And I'm going to duplicate this box. And I'm going to cut now again you saw nothing change. So now I'm going to hold down control. Grab this left corner here, bring this down. Actually, undo that by holding Z, uh, uh, Control Z, because I actually messed that up. I meant to actually say Shift. Okay, so you hold down Shift, and you can scale this box down a little bit and make your border. Now you say, hey, I can't see a difference. Well, you can see there's a box in here. If you hold down Shift, and you click the outer box, both of them will be selected, or you can highlight both by doing this. Come up to the top here and go to Path, Difference. It now sucked out that rectangle in the middle. So you can move this all around. It's now a transparent background. Come to your text tool, click in the middle, Say hello, or whatever name you're putting in there. Line it up. Again, hold down control. Grab the lower right corner and scale this up. And there's your first plate. Now you can hit control duplicate. Again, or control D, sorry. Drag it down. And I'll show you a little trick after this in a second to how to center all this. So now we type in Steve. So we have our hello Steve again. But we don't know, see, as you can see, it's not centered. We have a lot of space here, maybe a little space here. Well, since we made this into legitly a frame, we can actually select that and the text by holding Shift. Coming up here to these three bars to bring up your align and distribute. We have selection area selected here on the right side here, the far right. And then select center and vertical axis, center and horizontal. That is now centered. Come here and do the same thing with the other one. You can either select it all by highlighting this way or holding down shift and selecting each. Make sure selection area is selected. Click here and here and you'll see that this all lined up. Now. When I do my compound cuts, my wood is not 90 degree square. I have roundovers. So I know there's a little bit of a space, so I kind of just eyeball this and move it up and go, okay. I then cut these individually off of a piece of paper and then tape them to their side. Um, if you have 90 degrees and you want to do the fold, obviously you can still do the line here and do your fold. Um, hopefully this explained how to do this. Um, if you want to make this uh, printable at a size that's bigger than 8.5 by 11, I would suggest doing hashes so you can make like a circle. Oh, that was the other thing I forgot to mention. Huh. Alright, so what if you have a name that is really long? such as Steven123. Alright. So now we know that's long. We're going to select this, center these out. Obviously we need a little bit more room here, so we're going to grab the outer box, stretch that out a little bit. Again, grab the selection area. Okay. So now we can match this up with the length of this one. But obviously this looks really weird. So if I select this and we go boop boop. Okay. So now this looks really awkward because you have something small with something really long. So what you can do is actually import I don't have one on hand, I should have had one. Some sort of design, a heart or an anchor or whatever you want. You can import that in 
and then draw it in, or whatever you want to do here. And we'll bring this over. And now you basically filled those voids with something. You can put hearts, you can put whatever you want there. Um, so hopefully that explains how to make this a little more proportionate. If you have any questions, um, feel free to ask. And if I didn't cover something, check out my other video that looks like, you know, bad, but at least explained everything perfectly, where this one I'm kind of all over scatterbrained. Um, enjoy!